Well, thank you, Dr. Landon. I, um, I joined Dr. Landon here in Ventura County 18 years ago um, after having been an emergency room physician in Los Angeles. And I remember soon after I joined him, he made a comment that we are focusing on community pediatrics here and there is a lot to do. Um, just do something. And uh, never thought it would lead me to, uh, to today where I would be talking about um, alcohol and talking about prenatal care. But here I am. I have an apology to make. I made some changes to my slideshow, not realizing that the slideshow was going to get printed up um, and given to you as a handout. If you see anything on this slideshow that you would like, please let me know, and I would gladly um, share that with you. Um, alcohol has been with us for a long time, and the problems associated with it have been identified both those who are secularists and sectarians. So both Aristotle and the Old Testament have commented on the problems associated with women who drink alcohol and the problems that it uh, may cause in their offspring. The um, question is, is, have we learned anything from uh, the wisdom of the ages? And the answer is, is apparently not. A number of years ago, the Center for Disease Control did a survey here in the United States um, interviewing women and tried to find out um, about their uh, alcohol consumption habits. And it turned out that 10% uh, of them were drinking alcohol during their pregnancy. About 2% of them were actually engaging in binge drinking during the pregnancy, which is five or more drinks of alcohol on an occasion. And 2% were considered frequent alcohol drinkers, seven or more drinks in a week. Um, about 35 years ago, I guess it is, the, uh, some physicians up in the state of Washington who were running a clinic for alcoholic mothers noticed some similarities that they were noticing in the offspring, and they finally uh, published that, and, and they coined the term fetal alcohol syndrome. Now, all of us had, have heard about fetal alcohol syndrome. We probably had maybe half a lecture on it um, during our residency training, but if you are like me, we have not learned a whole lot about it. Um, the syndrome is associated with a variety of problems, growth retardation both at birth and postnatally. Uh, it's associated with some central nervous system abnormalities, and it's also associated with some very distinct facies. This is a photograph of a child with the full-blown syndrome, and you can notice, hopefully, um, the, the philtrum is, is flattened and indistinct, and the lips, um, the upper lip is very thin, uh, you cannot appreciate, though, that the palpebral fissure is very, very narrow. Those three are the hallmarks of uh, the syndrome. The group up in Washington have been focusing on this for a number of years, uh, focusing on it to a degree that is actually pretty astounding. They've come up with these materials that can help you assess the facial dysmorphology and kind of grade it, um, both the filtrum, um, and the lip, both in the African-American population and the Caucasian population. Um, so there are some tools available that would help make the diagnosis. Uh, the effects are, are fairly catastrophic in the full-blown syndrome, um, with this showing the, uh, the brain of a child with the fetal alcohol syndrome. This slide uh, shows some problems on the corpus callosum, uh, the one on the left being normal. It's thin in the uh, middle, and it's completely absent on the right. Uh, this also shows a genesis of the corpus callosum and also a huge abnormality um, back in the uh, cerebellar area. The sole cause of fetal alcohol syndrome is alcohol. Um, kind of a, a redundant statement. But in the, in the 1940s, early 1950s, the American Medical Association disagreed with that statement. They actually said in a statement that they published that the problems that children of alcoholic mothers were experiencing was not related to the alcohol, but was related to familial and genetic factors. The Institute of Medicine clarified that in 1996, where they, they stated that alcohol produces by far the most serious neurobehavioral effect in the fetus, even though it doesn't get nearly the attention that the methamphetamine and the cocaine and the other substances do in our society. Uh, so I'm here to talk about um, not FAS, but 
this new term, this fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, or FASDA. Um, the terminology is a little confusing. Um, some areas call it fetal alcohol effects. Um, some call it alcohol-related neurodevelopmental disorders. Uh, one of the key points to, to remember is that these disorders don't necessarily come with the obvious stigmata of the fetal alcohol syndrome. So this is an umbrella term that describes a whole host of problems that may show up when you do your developmental surveillance in your, your office. Not all children exposed to alcohol develop all the problems, and this has led to some uh, varying recommendations, both by obstetricians, by labor and delivery nurses, that a little bit of alcohol is okay because not all children develop the problems. And there's a variety of factors that actually may attenuate the risk, um, depending on the type of exposure, whether it's binge drinking or chronic exposure. Um, there are some studies that have shown that the peak blood alcohol level has an effect on, on the developing cells. Um, the developmental timing of exposure when, during, the pregnancy was the alcohol um, taken. There's genetic factors, there's nutritional factors. It's been very interesting to me just to briefly read some of the literature that's out there. And there is an amazing volume of literature out there. There are thousands of people that are actually studying this, people who really recognize that this is a very big deal for our society. The alcohol affects cell migration, adhesion, it causes cell death, cell di division and differentiation, intracellular calcium problems, production of free radicals, bad news. And it can affect many, many different areas of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus, corpus callosum, the hypothalamus, the limbic system, the basal ganglia. And because of these problems, you will pick up problems on your developmental surveillance that are caused from this effect. Manifestations are protean. You know, they have cognitive effects. They have executive function impairment. And the executive function one is actually a very key one um, because it is probably the most significant problems that cause functional impairments in them trying to get through the day. Behavioral problems and interpersonal problems, emotional, sensory integration, speech and language, motor impairment, all sorts of things that are going to show up when you ask mom or dad, do you have any concerns? With respect to cognition, there's a wide variety of problems. You can have children who have the global deficit seen in FAS. You can have kids who have normal IQs but just can't quite understand why when they're rude, other children don't like to be around them. Um, there are specific learning disabilities, memory, both short and long-term problems. The executive function, um, they they can't, children with this problem, they can't plan things well, they don't understand that um, things happen in the future, um, they have poor judgment, they have poor impulse control, can't organize themselves, they don't understand cause and effect. Um, and so trying to use tough love on an adolescent whose brain has been damaged from alcohol doesn't work real well. All sorts of behavioral challenges, they're impulsive, hyperactive, they're distractible, they're aggressive, they can, they're described as explosive, they can lie, they can cheat, they're easily frustrated. Dramatic effects on their, their social life. They can't read social cues when someone is, is trying to tell them something non-verbally. Um, they lack empathy, they externalize blame, they're needy, they're rigid. The lack of self-awareness, the difficulty understanding consequences. So telling someone that, well, if you do this, you're going to go to jail, they don't make the connection. And I'll talk a little bit later on about the juvenile justice system. Uh, significant emotional issues. They have little ability to recognize feelings. They have little ability to articulate their feelings. There's a sense of urgency and intensity in everything that they deal with throughout the day. Anxiety is common. They're extremely labile. And not surprisingly, they have low self-esteem. Uh, sensory integration is a, a controversial area, um, but not for these children. Um, they, they struggle with, with controlling the, the sensory input. Some, some children get easily overwhelmed. Some don't respond at all. Um, it can lead to irritable behaviors, distractible behaviors. 
It can affect 